Are solar powered planes really possible? Well, the first attempt to make this a reality was made by R.J. Boucher in 1974. Fast forward a few decades and hobbyists were even tinkering with solar powered RC planes in their own backyards. But then Bertrand Picard came along and he wasn't just looking to fly a bit further, he wanted to push solar tech to a new level with the Solar Impulse 2. Aviation experts have long argued that solar power planes are too large, too lightweight and uncontrollable in flight. But Bertrand Picard believed there was a way. Everything is possible. Why don't we dream more? Why don't we try more? Joining forces with Andre Boschberg, a seasoned fighter pilot and engineer, the Swiss duo set out to prove the skeptics wrong by creating the first solar plane to fly throughout the night and around the world. But this was more than just a flight. It became a global spectacle. Millions tuned in to witness each landing, mesmerized by this extraordinary achievement. Their dream was ambitious, a world tour with 12 stops, including Oman, India, Myanmar, China, Japan, the United States, Europe, and back to Abu Dhabi, all without releasing a single emission. This bold vision, 13 years in the making, took off on March 9, 2015. Fueled by relentless collaboration and intense research, Andre led a team of engineers to create a solar plane that once seemed unthinkable. The secret to staying airborne for days lies in the plane's design. The aircraft is built for endurance, not speed, with a sleek glider-like design. Its long, thin wings give it a graceful floating presence while the slim, streamlined body holds a small central cockpit for one pilot. With a classic T-tail for stability, it is the marathon runner of the skies, cruising for hours or even days. The aircraft requires a lot of power, which is why 17,000 solar cells were installed on its wings to capture enough sunlight to generate up to 340 kilowatt hours of energy. That's the equivalent amount of power needed to run a three bedroom house for 10 days. These cells are spread across a 236 foot wingspan. That is wider than a Boeing 747. These panels convert sunlight into electricity powering the plane's four electric motors. With only 10 hours of sunlight available each day, scientists devised a precise 24-hour flight cycle to maximize energy collection and ensure the plane could keep flying through the night. During the day, the plane climbs to 28,000 feet, which is roughly the cruising altitude of a commercial airliner. While it's up there, the plane absorbs enough sun for daytime and excess sunlight is stored in batteries for the night. Here is the genius part. When night falls, the plane glides to about 5,000 feet to conserve energy, saving every bit of stored battery power until the sun rises again. It's like coasting downhill on a bike. During this nighttime phase, the aircraft relies entirely on the remaining battery power, ensuring continued flight throughout the night. The challenge becomes even harder. The aircraft must remain light, super light, to stay airborne while carrying the heavy batteries that are essential for sustaining its energy supply. The Solar Impulse 2 only weighs about 2.3 tons, roughly the same as an SUV. That's like having a family car with the wings of a jumbo jet. The engineers pulled this off by using carbon fiber that's lighter than paper and alveolate foam in a honeycomb structure for strength. And the solar cells? They're wrapped in an ultra-thin polymer film, a transparent resin that shields against water and UV radiation while staying flexible enough for the wing's curves. To balance the weight of the lithium-ion batteries, the aircraft was tested to be aerodynamically perfect. The team used computational fluid dynamics simulations and wind tunnel testing to fine-tune its shape for maximum lift and minimum drag. The plane is powered by four motors, two under each wing. The plane's solar power flows into a system that manages the motors, batteries, and energy distribution, acting like an ultimate multitasking brain. But even with a near limitless supply, the real limit was the human pilot's stamina. The Swiss team 
devised a plan where Andre and Bertrand would take turns flying different legs of the journey, since the cockpit could only fit one person. It was still a slow and grueling trip since the plane's speed ranged between 22 and 86 miles per hour, the same speed our cars commute every day. To ensure the pilot's safety, oxygen tanks were necessary for the entire trip. As without them, the pilot could lose consciousness in just 5 to 10 minutes. To make matters worse, there were no heating or cooling systems on board. The cabin is not pressurized uh, for uh, weight reasons. It would cost too much weight in, uh, in the aircraft and we uh, have decided to use oxygen instead. Outside temperatures ranged from a freezing negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit to a scorching 104 degrees. To keep the cockpit environment bearable for the pilots, high-density thermal insulation was installed. This material traps more air, providing superior insulation that minimizes heat loss or gain. The cockpit also only had space for a reclinable chair, so the team had to get creative with ways to keep the pilot active and alert. They also practiced meditation and self-hypnosis to mentally combat fatigue and sharpen focus. You may be wondering, how did they manage bathroom breaks? The solution was a built-in toilet in the seat, made from a sealed bag. Incredibly, the pilot could only sleep for 20 minutes at a time. No snoozing for long stretches here. Strict aviation regulations are in place due to the risks of the aircraft tilting, prohibiting pilots from sleeping while flying over populated areas. They used a stabilization augmentation system alerting the pilot if the aircraft tilted more than 5 degrees because a tilt of 10 degrees could send the plane into an uncontrollable spin. Fortunately, the pilot wasn't flying without help. An entire team at the Mission Control in Monaco was constantly monitoring every aspect of the flight, from air traffic to weather conditions. They maintained constant communication with the pilot, ensuring a smooth and safe journey. After successfully completing seven of the 12 flights, the next leg from Nagoya, Japan to Honolulu, Hawaii made past flights feel like mere warm-ups. The engineers and pilots were now about to face the most intense and challenging part of the mission that put their aircraft to the test. They were about to cross the Pacific Ocean, a vast 4,481 miles in five days. The flight was a massive gamble with Boschbeck's life on the line. Flying over a remote stretch of ocean meant that if any critical component failed, there would be no way to fix it mid-flight and it will be all over. The mission's success hinged on a delicate balance of technology, human endurance and the unpredictable forces of nature. Engineers were initially so concerned about the safety of this leg some were ready to resign due to the risks involved. The, the mission control center says we don't want to support this flight, we cannot do this flight. I think we need, we, need, we need one team. There's only so much we can do to support you from here, from the ground. So when you decide to go on, you will be on your own up there. Let's go, let's go for it and thank you for, for helping me and thank you for helping us. Their concerns were beginning to be proven correct because the aircraft's batteries had melted along the way. While flying over the Pacific, Boschberg unknowingly had a new problem quietly developing. We overheated the batteries during the first day of the flight. We damaged the batteries. During the flight, the batteries became insulated and their prolonged exposure to sunlight created a growing threat to the plane's motors. It was only a matter of time before the plane lost power. Named Andre Borschberg is strapped into the tiny cockpit in a fragile solar-powered plane, and he's only about a thousand kilometers away from his destination. Andre, if I can ask you uh, how you're feeling after all that time, you broke a world record in terms of solo flight a few hours ago. Uh, how are you holding up? Well, first of all, it's uh, absolutely magnificent. But Boschberg touched down at Kala Loa Airport just in time 
narrowly avoiding a horrific disaster. The flight was a remarkable demonstration of human determination and the potential for solar energy, setting the world record for the longest solo flight ever completed. However, now the team faced a major setback, a lengthy delay to replace the batteries and install a new cooling system. Solar Impulse will stay in Hawaii thanks to the University of Hawaii, the airport and the, the authorities. Uh, we'll do the repairs and the flight will continue around the world uh, next April 2016. With months of repair ahead and the world watching, it was unclear if the dream will survive. But as Bosch Beck stated, and you know, all the obstacles that we found, that we had to overcome, I guess it's just made us stronger. I mean, we have the energy now to continue. We have the commitment to complete this flight around the world next year, hopefully, of course, successfully. In April 2016, Solar Impulse 2 was back in the sky to continue the thrilling adventure. After its 505 days, covering 26,000 miles and making 19 stops, the aircraft successfully completed its monumental flight on July 2016, landing back in Abu Dhabi. It became the first aircraft to circumnavigate the globe without using a single drop of fuel, generating almost 12,000 kilowatt hours of solar energy. That's enough energy to power a house for a whole year. Millions watched as news outlets like CNN, BBC, and Reuters tracked its progress, captivated by this story of innovation and endurance. And you know, they were astronauts going to the moon, and today they are heads of states making a better world. This is the message. Better quality of life. This is the new adventure of the 21st century. Congratulations for what you're doing, and good luck.